I'm Dr. Agustina Beringer, and today we're holding an interesting discussion with Leith Ashley, an LGBTQ plus community advocate. So thank you so much, Leith, for being here with us today. Thank you so much for having me. I'm really excited. So Agustina, what is convenient care and how can convenient care and urgent care help? Convenient care and urgent care clinics, as you know, Leith, have um, sort of prop cropped up um, to address a, a gap in access to healthcare. And so these can be affiliated with uh, retail pharmacies or with larger hospital chains, or sometimes just be standalone clinics. And um, they, they provide an, an easy and fast way to get in to see a clinician, uh, usually without an appointment. So Leith, what do you think are the most common misconceptions about PrEP and how can they best be addressed? Um, one of the biggest misconceptions that I found was that PrEP was primarily only for LGBTQ people. Um, so a lot of folks that identified as straight or heterosexual felt that maybe PrEP wasn't for them. Um, I also found in my experience um, as a patient um, that PrEP wasn't offered or discussed um, if you were assigned female at birth. So mm -hmm. for me as a trans guy, um, a lot of times PrEP or sexual health in general was kind of put on the backside because uh, providers sometimes assumed that, oh, you're you're AFAB, so you probably aren't as sexually active as, as maybe a gay male, um, a gay cis male. And those misconceptions can oftentimes lead into lack of education for the patient and for the provider as well. So Agustina, um, which of your patients need to know about PrEP? Well, personally, I think everybody should know about PrEP. Uh, like you said, you know, it's not specific to gay cisgender males, um, which is much of the misconception. Um, what are effective ways for individuals to advocate for their own sexual health and access to PrEP? I think as much as a patient feels comfortable doing so, if they are interested in PrEP, if they've heard about it, if they think that it might be a good fit for them, I think just asking about it. And unfortunately, I have been told by some patients that their providers didn't feel comfortable or sometimes didn't even know what PrEP was, which is what we're trying to uh, spread the word about. But, um, you know, PrEP is not something we we hold as a prize to see if you qualify to get it or not. If uh, If patients want to know more about it and they ask about it, I hope that all clinicians would comfortably answer questions and consider starting the patient on PrEP. Um, what are the barriers to accessing PrEP and how can they be addressed to ensure that everyone has access? So one of the barriers as we're talking about is lack of uh, continuous health care, primary care, or um, just a, an ongoing relationship with a provider. And that's where those urgent and convenient care centers um, it, do a great job of filling that gap. But of course, economic barriers and access to healthcare in general are are significant. And so, you know, PrEP requires um, blood tests and urine tests and, and ongoing treatment and, and testing every three months. And so that can get expensive if people are paying out of pocket for it. And um, insurances, though, m most of the time, uh, tend to cover the treatment without without any issue. But as we know, not everybody has access to, to health insurance or health coverage. So would it be an okay time to discuss a little bit what other people might want to think about PrEP? Oh yeah, I've noted that there is an influx of um, straight cisgender women that have acquired um, HIV. Uh, particularly in uh, black and brown communities. So there's also the disparity of income, education, um, lack of access to health insurance and healthcare in general. Yeah, I agree. Uh, younger uh, people and people of color especially um, are exorbitantly less likely to have access to care. And like you said, um, it doesn't matter whether you're a cis or trans or gay or not gay, it, HIV can happen because of many reasons, right? We think of, of, of sex and people have sex. It's not, it's not <laughs> just gay men who have sex, right? Uh, lots of people have sex. It can happen from, um, from injection drug use. It can happen when a partner has uh, 
been incarcerated. So there's lots of indications where someone may be at increased risk and um, we don't want to stereotype who should get PrEP and who shouldn't. We should just approach each patient as the individual that they are and have that frank, comfortable, hopefully discussion in a safe space so that um, they, we can just evaluate essentially what their risk is and discuss whether PrEP might be appropriate for them. Absolutely agree. A, a healthcare, a pro, your provider's office should be a safe space. It should be a place where you're going to get help to, you know, we live in this body, in this vessel, and we want to live as long as we can and, and as healthy as we can. So I think that's ultimately the most important thing.